My name is Jeffrey Frankel and I have shown students techniques to reduce the time answer questions in paper one of the IB chemistry exam at both levels, standard level and higher level. These questions are multiple choice, you have 90 seconds available for each question and you have no calculator. These techniques that I am about to show you will help you dramatically reduce the time needed to answer those questions correctly in maybe 30 or 40 seconds and in some cases even less, thus giving you extra time to do other questions within the paper. This is a question about the number of particles in an atom, or in this case it's an ion, uh, the oxygen ion. They tell you, so the number of protons of oxygen is 8, they tell you well, all you have to do is determine the number of neutrons and the number of electrons. Now the simple way of doing it is if there are 8 protons in a neutral atom, oxygen atom, there's going to be 8 electrons. However, this has two negative charges, and therefore, if there are eight protons, there's going to be ten electrons, so only A or D are possible answers. The second thing to know is that if there are eight protons, and we'll put the eight there, the difference between the eight and the eighteen is the number of neutrons. Therefore, the number of neutrons is ten, and therefore the answer is going to be D. Now, if you're having difficulty with this kind of question, then what I would suggest is you take the periodic table, this is a copy of the periodic table, use the one in the IB data booklet, or a copy of one from a previous exam, and get used to it. Try and become familiar with this paper, with this table, so that if you're asked a question about it, you can find your way around it quickly in the exam. You don't want to be in the exam room and not know which is the atomic number and which is the atomic mass. You need to know it immediately You get in when, you, when you're looking at it. And the best way to do that, in my experience, is carry a periodic table with you. And every day, for five days, take it out, look at it for five minutes, and simply say, ah, hydrogen, one proton, atomic number one. Helium, two protons, atomic number two. Lithium, three protons, atomic number three. Beryllium, four protons, atomic number four. Do that up to 20, calcium to 20. That's a reasonable number to deal with okay. every day. And then go back, once you've done that list, go back and say hydrogen. In the atom of hydrogen, there is one proton and one electron. In the atom of helium, there's two protons and two electrons. In the atom of lithium, there's three protons and three electrons. Do that all the way through to calcium. And then go through some of the other ions. Look at lithium and say, lithium has three protons. It also has three electrons. However, in the positive ion, it still has three protons, but it only has two electrons. Go to sodium. Sodium has 11 protons in the atom. In the positive ion, it has 10 electrons. Go to magnesium. Magnesium in the atom has 12 protons, 12 electrons. In the magnesium 2 plus iron, it only has 10 electrons. Go over to, let us say, oxygen. Oxygen has 8 protons, and in the neutral atom has 8 electrons. Whereas in the iron, it has 10 electrons, because there are two negative charges. Fluorine will have 9 protons, and in the negative ion will have 10 electrons. Chlorine has 17 protons, 
17 electrons in the negative ion left 18 electrons do a few of those like that and you do that for maybe five minutes every day for a week and at the end of that time you will thoroughly understand the periodic table okay this is about a transition metal x2 plus and uh, therefore you will know that if I show you a periodic table here it's going to be one of these elements down here from usually from 22 uh, atomic number 22 titanium to atomic number 29 copper now they do say the electronic has electronic configuration of ARD9 so you go immediately to AR and they're asking you for the atomic number so you look at the atomic number of AR and that's 18 that's 18 and you then add the 9 electrons from that so that comes to 27 but that only gives you the iron in order to go from the iron to the neutral atom you need to add another two electrons so this 20, 18 plus 9 plus 2 that's 29 so the answer is 29 and that comes to and it's copper this is another question where it would be best if you were thoroughly familiar with the periodic table so you didn't really have to look at it and you knew what they were talking about here when they give you these numbers so the, the bottom number 1, 17, 19 is the atomic number or the number of protons the top number 1, 35, 39 is the number that comes from adding protons to neutrons and therefore the difference between these two numbers is the number of neutrons that's uh, 39 to 19 is 20 neutrons the difference between that and that 18 neutrons and the difference between that and that is no neutrons okay so immediately you can see which of the following particles contains more electrons than neutrons you know one is going to be a good answer so you know that the question is then is looking for two because if you can eliminate two you might be okay let's look at two the number of electrons is 17 plus one so that's 18 electrons and you know there are 18 neutrons therefore this does not contain more electrons than neutrons so you can immediately eliminate two and that means the only possible answer is A you don't even need to think about 3 so with a bit of luck you could do this one in 15 to 20 seconds you first see that that one must be a good answer uh, and that immediately eliminates that and immediately eliminates that and then you realize that 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 one is not possible and therefore A is the only possible one okay there are two ways you could do this one and in both ways would do it you could do it in 10 seconds it's either you've done my simple exercise with the periodic table you've regularly you've regularly looked at the periodic table you looked at it for five minutes or so every day for a week uh, and that would mean that you will really remember it you could try it again a month later doing it every day for a week again and you would know immediately that the magnesium ion has only 10 electrons because you would remember the number so in less than 10 seconds you can do this question saving you a minute nearly a minute and a half for other questions later on in the paper however if you haven't done that it, they do tell you the atomic number or the number of protons and if there are 12 protons in a neutral atom then there are 12 electrons in a neutral atom and in order to get two positive charges you've got to take away two electrons so giving you the 10 electrons this is one that does confuse students however if you know that mass number is the top number 
an atomic number is the bottom number, which is not included here, which is not in, in, in the answers, you would know immediately that if mass number is 19, the atomic number, of, and you know that the atomic number of fluorine is 9. Of course, you can look at the periodic table to find that out, but hopefully you have remembered that the atomic number of fluorine is 9, and therefore C is the only possible answer. Uh, potassium does not have an atomic number of 9, has an atomic number of 19, and silicon, why silicon is there, I don't know. It's probably to try and confuse you. Uh, and this would certainly confuse you putting the 9 up there. You have to remember that the atomic number is the number at the bottom, and the mass number is the number at the top. These kind of questions are so easy that you should do them in 10 seconds. Ignore the, the electrons. Ignore the electrons. It's irrelevant in terms of the number of neutrons. All you need to know is the atomic number of oxygen. Hopefully you remember that it's 8. And therefore the difference between 18 and 8 is 10 and that's the number of neutrons. And as I said earlier, practice with the periodic table just by reading it and trying to absorb the information so that this kind of question can be done in 10 seconds or less. When students see this, they think they have to rush to the periodic table to check it all out. If you've looked at the periodic table as often as I've suggested, you know, once a day, for five minutes, for about five days, and then maybe do it a month later, same thing. Look at the periodic table for five minutes every day for about five days. You would realize that there are a number of characteristics. First is that the atomic number, the maximum value for the atomic number, is about 100. 103, I think, is the one on the uh, IB periodic table. So you can immediately eliminate a and B, because it's impossible for an atomic number to be 235. Those are out. So you've only got an atomic number of 92. Those are the only two possibilities. Secondly, the mass number of uranium is 235. Therefore, it can't possibly have 238 neutrons. So immediately, you can say the answer is C. And this is without looking at the periodic table, but just remembering a few basic ideas about the periodic table. And as I suggest, look at the periodic table for five minutes every day for a week. And then a month later, do the same. And you will realize that this kind of question can be answered in less than 10 or 15 seconds. Thank you for watching. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please see my other YouTube videos. Thank you.